welcome to Two Guys on Some Horror. As always, your hosts are here to serve you your weekly dose of horror. Commentary and may potentially reviews, maybe some Clark mayhem, who knows? I'm one of your hosts, Clark, and I'm joined with today, as always, my forever friend and ride or die, Curtis. What's How you doing, you? buddy? I'm doing good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. I'm, I'm doing really great. Uh, I, I got to take a nap before this, you know, I got to degrog a little bit. So my mind's feeling sharp and I'm, I'm really excited to talk about this film. This is uh, um, one of my favorite horror movies. Uh, it's Alien. Yeah, and I got I got to say, like, thank you so much for picking this because I haven't seen it in forever i was trying to even figure out the last time i had actually seen it and i would have been super young probably eight nine years old i don't know um too scared to really ever watch it again probably and then just kind of i've always known it to be very classic horror um you know it's one of the most talked about horror films when you look at top 10 lists it's on top 10 top 10 lists a lot and uh i always had some miss misunderstandings about the movies because I thought Alien and Aliens were the same film just people kept screwing up whenever they were talking about it and there's a this is kind of off track but in Conker's Bad Fur Day the video game uh, on the Nintendo 64 there's a level in which you're actually um, playing as the female lead in the film and when, when you're Ripley, you have to get in the robot suit and all that, and you fight Alien in Conker's Bad Friday, but you're all doing this as Conker's, which I always thought was from the first film. And uh, yeah, that nope. just goes to show how often I had ever watched Alien, and I'm actually kind of, you know, disappointed with myself. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little confusing, especially the way Hollywood works with the naming conventions. Like, we have Alien, then you have Aliens, and then you have Aliens 3. Uh, it makes more sense with the first two movies. But this is the only one that I would actually call a horror movie in terms of, like, trying to scare the audience. The other rest of the movies, like, they are pretty much action films. Aliens is uh, closer to a horror movie, but once you hit Aliens 3, it's just... That's kind of when it's like, oh, yeah, it's just people shooting. It's Marines shooting aliens. There we go. I was going to say they're, they're considered super high uh, sci-fi as well, right? Yeah, they're all sci-fi. Everything takes place in, uh, in like uh, different areas. This film, we're in, on the Nostromo, which is a space merchant vessel. It, it receives the – so uh, kind of give you a little bit of a – give the audience a little bit of background of this film. We – we're stuck on the Nostromo with the crew here. We don't really have a main character at the point of the beginning. We were introduced to, to several of them. We're introduced to Ripley, who's played by Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver. Uh, Dallas, who I believe is the captain. Lambert, who is one of the, uh, I believe she's one of the science officers on the ship. You have Ash, who is the doctor. You have Kane, Brett, Parker, and uh, Mother, who is... Uh, they kind of like, not, I don't know, Is it, would you consider Mother an AI? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So I mean, she's, I, she's, I wrote a note about her specifically. I was just like, what a cool name for a piece of software with AI technology that takes care of you throughout the, you know, your trip. You don't even have to be awake. And she's just constantly looking out for you or maintaining things or managing all the things in the background. And then she has what seems to be almost like, superior knowledge on everything right whenever they go in there and talk with her and at the very beginning like you're saying like they, there are only two people i think who had access to mother at the very beginning of the to like kind of discuss with her what's going on and what the primary objectives are for their business or whatever company they're working for and dallas and ash the two of them i believe are the only ones who start with access later on access is given to another character um and we kind of get a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a spoiler area there, which if you haven't seen this movie before, I highly recommend it. And uh, I don't want to spoil too much aside I mean, from the fact that there's an alien on this ship mm -hmm. and there's a synthetic. <laughs> to be fair, 
Like, if you haven't seen this movie, please, like, stop listening to the podcast. Um, put us on your, like, your backlog if you've never seen Alien. And I know that sounds kind of, I mean, I may even come off a little condescending, I guess. But, like, no, it's fair. If you haven't ever seen it, me, a guy who hasn't seen it for years, is asking you to not listen to this episode. Please go watch the movie. It's on HBO right now. Um, but go check it out. And, and, and is it on Hulu? was when i it was a while ago perfect might not be anymore okay but either way it's on a streaming service right and the, it's currently the, on hulu perfect and i hope that um you know you watch it first then come back and listen because there as we break apart the story and and whatnot there probably is going to be some things that are considered spoilery for you um i mean one of my quotes is going to spoil something later on so stop now go watch it come back but uh yeah, Clark, go ahead. Keep going, buddy. I'm I'm well, loving this so uh, far. Let's kind of start with that uh, that call they got. The uh, the little distressed call. So they're they're going in to investigate. They all get on their spaceship shit or spacesuits, and uh, there's a classic scene where they're entering in, and there's like the giant alien, and it's kind of its chair, and it's dead. Okay, so I'm at everywhere. I'm at this part right now, by the way, and I want you to tell me what the hell that is. Uh, so have you seen no. uh, Prometheus? I'm gonna tell you no right now. Nothing else okay. in the Alien uh, franchise have I seen, and if I did, I was too young to remember it. So please, like, give me some background here, because I think the it's, viewers it's would. It's one love. of the engineers that created humans. If if you follow the uh, the stuff from Prometheus, honestly, Prometheus was kind of a long movie and not worth watching at all. Okay. And the alien does not look like the one that's in this chair. That's kind of like an exoskeleton suit. But aside from that, it's it it died from an alien bursting from its chest, and I think they showcase like the cavity. Yeah, you can see that uh, dead center. I have it paused because this thing. Just, oh man, this this part of the movie, um, you know, when they put on their spacesuits and they go into the ship to go do investigating about this the SOS signal that they got. Is probably one of my favorite scenes in the movie. Um, I feel like the just the effect, the scenery, the I don't know, man, the graphic, like everything they have going on is just so atmospheric. It's perfect. I don't think exactly the word I was looking for is atmospheric. <laughs> yes, I don't think I've seen an alien ship done better than this in any horror, any sci-fi, and it, um, especially I mean, in 1979. Yeah, like this does not feel like 1979. It feels late 80s even modern in some aspects yeah. of it it's crazy i would honestly like this movie holds up uh, the only thing that doesn't hold up is the costume but we don't see enough of it to the point where it doesn't really matter and they build up to it perfectly so you don't even worry about it until like maybe the very end if you're looking at it you just start laughing but uh we'll talk about the eggs uh, mm -hmm. so yeah one of the characters is curious to see what what's in them, and they start. It starts moving, so he puts his face right in front of it, and acid comes out, and the face hugger latches right onto his face, which are like these kind of these. They're made. I think they made them with like crab legs or some something. They they look like giant uh, hand. You, yeah, you can almost say like tendrils. Two <laughs> two hands, you know, together. So you've got basically eight to ten uh, tentacle-looking things, but they're more like stingers, like you're saying. Yeah. Um, it's and when... like a pair of lungs with <laughs> with like large tendrils coming out of the sides yeah. and a lar long tail that kind of looks like uh, an umbilical cord. Yeah. It's uh, it's super creepy looking. Um, the fact that they could keep those things looking so uh, grotesque and and wet the entire time i i mean that just it adds it just adds man Ugh. yeah yeah uh. so moving on this guy he the face hugger grabs his face they take him back to the ship to the medical bay uh ripley is on the ship she uh will not let the captain i believe brett who is the one who has his face wrapped or anyone else who is coming in kane is wrapped just to clarify, Kane is wrapped. Kane's um, wrapped. Brett's yeah. not. Brett, um, Brett's yeah, an engineer. Right. Brett <laughs> Brett's an engineer. Brett's an engineer who, who gives 
shit to Ripley, right? Yep. Uh, we can get into that later. But these, they bring him in, they take him to the hospital bay, and Facehugger eventually falls off. Um, it's just dead. And Kane gets up, he's fine. And he starts eating with everyone. And this scene is probably the best scene in the film, in my personal opinion, is when they're all sitting down for lunch, Ripley gets her coffee because she fucking loves coffee, and this is where the the first chest bursting scene happens. Um, yeah. So, like, so two things. Two things. If if they would have just listened to Parker and Brett, this all could have been avoided. Okay. Like you Parker so? and Brett were well, the engineer. They're the engineers, and they were completely against going and looking into this SOS thing. But Ash um, keeps pushing it, right? And we know why because later on in the film we'll get there. Well, he says because mother, but he also has other motives. Like, he's not allowed to say no, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, but to that point, like, if they had just listened to Parker and Brett and turned the ship around or whatever and just went home, it all would have been fine. That's where the first, like, okay, we could have gotten away from this, right? The second one, though, is when Ripley, who's acting captain on the ship, doesn't doesn't want to let them back in kane dallas and lambert yet yeah ash, ash, ash sorry, hits I forgot the button to mention yeah. that ash <laughs> opens the door and he he's i think he's second well so he is the lead science engineer on the ship um, right and officer yeah and dallas makes that very clear because he leaves all science things to ash now what he is after the captain leaves the ship, I don't know, but we know Ripley is supposed to be in command, which means you do what she says, otherwise that's it. Anytime the captain's off the ship, second in command, that's the boss. Star Trek taught us that, right? Yep. So Ash just opened uh, it. Man, it's just it was just really frustrating to say like to see that and then everything after. So everything we're gonna go over well, here. <laughs> whose side were you were you on when you first when you saw this scene? Like if you did not know Ripley was was the hero which you wouldn't if this were the first time you were watching it. You would have no idea. What would you think? Whose side would you be on? Would you be on Dallas's side or would you be on Ripley's? Um, yeah, that's that's a tough choice. I mean, I'm on. if I'm someone inside the ship, I'm on Ripley's side. If I'm one of the three on the outside of the ship, I'm on Dallas's side, right? I guess that's the way I'd put it. Because as a viewer watching, you're neutral. Um, I would rather people be safe and not get murdered. <laughs> by whatever well, thing. she mentioned that there's a potential biological contaminant yeah like he's like no we don't i'm not gonna let you in no she's she's you know she's thinking appropriately she's the smart one yeah. which is also right. why i think right at that scene if you're not already on ripley's side you are at that point i think because people think are so? yeah people are choosing not to listen to her even though she's the only one who's actually thinking and not just acting right in i kind of was on dallas's side when i was watching and kind of thinking about, you know, he just seems like I were, a yes man. No, he seems like a captain who's been given a lot of shit. And then he's the one who actually confronts the alien with the flamethrower at, at, in future points. Like he he is a hero in a lot of ways, but I don't think he's a yes man. So I, to I me, think he's good... just run down and he does whatever the company tells him. Right. And that's that's where I'm just not I'm not feeling him because in in fairness, yeah. So, like, when Parker and Brad are demanding better bonuses, he doesn't even really, like, he doesn't even take that conversation seriously. He just basically... He says, you're going to get what you're owed. You're going right. to get what's in the contract. That's right. what you get. And then he leans on Ash, the science officer, to, like, shut it down, which is whenever they said that we don't want to go see the SOS thing. He's like, well, it's in your contract, and you'll forfeit all your shares. So, like, Dallas, again, like, pawns off that dude. I don't know. So for me, but when they come back in, they're like, "Hey, we brought that thing back in. We were, we were get our money, right?" And uh, Ripley, this is actually a bad recording moment of this film, where the dubbing is a little bit off. And she's say, "Yeah, you'll get your." She kind of cuts in and out at this point. Says, "Yes, you'll get your share." When they're kind of fucking with her, and there's like gas coming out, and they can't hear. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a rough but, yeah, scene. They, those two are dicks, to be frank. Brad Parker. I don't like either of them. <laughs> I thought they were kind of chodes, um, which is fine. It is it is what it is. But going back to the facehugger, yes. like we have, we have breakfast, right? We're eating breakfast. We're, you know, friends are coming down. Hey, hey, that guy's not sick anymore. He's coming to eat with us. 
And he gets up and he starts like grabbing his chest and he's like, mm-hmm. and uh, Parker looks over and he's like, hey man, the food ain't that bad. This and is my favorite space ball scene, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, the alien pops out of his chest and runs off and it's tiny. It's like the size of uh, like a kitten, I would say. Yeah. And they're looking for it the entire time. Like the rest of this film is them just looking for this alien and they don't know where it is until like a little bit in the future. Like one of the characters kind of comes, goes in the room and there's like a skin, like, you know, he, it looks like it's shed. And now it's the size of a very tall man. And it just starts murdering. It's also not fully done yet with his metamorphosis, right? Yeah. Because it still has the very light shell. Um, yeah. Like the pigment hasn't set in, which is crazy. I love the, the detail that went into this creature is phenomenal. Yeah, it was originally the same color as the face hugger, and then it was black. Uh, like mm-hmm. a very nice sheen of black. Yeah, so Kane, they yeet Kane right into space, <laughs> which always... I feel bad for the guy because that doesn't seem like a proper burial. Uh, but well, you don't they're know. worried that he has more yeah. contaminants in him. No, totally. I get it. It's just, Ripley it, was right. They're just, oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, the entire the entire time, Ash is being a complete chode, too. He's like, yeah, he, he's essentially not letting them kill the alien. He's like, don't kill it, don't kill it, don't kill it. And because of him, everyone dies. Pretty everyone. Much. Except pretty, for Ripley. Pretty much. Spoilers. And the cat. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, no. Uh, damn, was, I wish I remember the cat's name, but I don't. It was some weird name. Jingles? I don't, I don't think it was Jingles. It's a nice name, though. That cat, though, is a constant... Um, so, so here's something really, really fun, I think. We always complain that dogs die in movies, in horror movies especially, yeah. right? The cat doesn't die. Well, cats don't die in horror movies. No! I mean, if they do, you don't really see it. It's, they don't die because cats are actually demons. Yeah. But I'm, that, I'm that gonna, cat just... I'm like, not touching terror- that with a <laughs> six-foot pole. That cat, I, try to, I try to get my family to get a cat, and I got shot down from everybody. Nobody wants cat a cat. Cat politics, man. Um, I don't know. They're gro- cats are growing on me. I've always disliked cats. I've always been a dog person. But cats are growing on me. I see so many cute cats out there. That play tricks on you, and I mean, I don't want one that's going to kill me in my sleep, but I'm okay with one that's going to knock my water off a table every once in a while, you know, just to keep me on my toes. But yeah, the point I'm trying to make about this damn cat is it comes out at the most, I think, perfect moments for a for a horror film, <laughs> like when they're yeah. looking for the alien at first before it gets big, right? The cat, yeah, it's a jump scare. It's a jump scare, yeah, but it's perfectly timed. It's realistic. Uh, I'm sure everyone has had, anyone who has a pet or has had a pet has been scared by their pet at least once in their life, hopefully. I mean, I hope. But um, anyways, I think that cat just comes out of the, the perfect times. And then uh, when when Brett has to go and look for it, man, that that scene is crazy. When he's just out there, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. And then he ends up coming across the most opposite thing from his cat that he could find. It's just, I love well, it. Well, when you think that the alien scene. is going to show up, it's half the time it's the cat. Yep. Yeah, it's a little. Good. It's 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 great. Jones the cat, main Jones. character of the film. Jones the cat. Yeah. Um, it would kind of be cool to see an entire cut of this film from the cat's perspective, watching everybody. That's kind of what you're getting. You know, the the camera. It could just be taken as the cat's perspective. I don't know. Um. Anyways, enough about the cat, because the cat's only you know half of the surviving crew. Ripley's the other half. Um, but yeah, um, I, I don't know. Do we want to talk too much about Dallas's death or, I, you know, we he, can talk he about dies the a hero. He stuff. dies like a hero. He does. He does. And he has, they, they jerry rig a flamethrower and that's essentially their weapon against the alien. Yeah. I, w- I want to hear from you though. I want to hear about Dallas's death. Like what, what about it makes you feel like he is a hero? Just the way that he was so uh, balls to the wall to get in there and fight the thing. Like, he wasn't scared um, like some of the other characters. I mean, Ripley's not... I wouldn't say Ripley was scared. I wouldn't count her. And Ash had his own reasons for why he didn't want to go 
you know, fight the thing. Um, but I just really like, I like the way Dallas's character to me throughout the beginning of the film, you're getting this hard ass, um, not easy to get along with, don't really agree with kind of a guy. And then by this time where he has to step up, like he really steps up and he does what he should do as a captain. He becomes uh, a true hero and, and tries to go and fight this thing. And I, I just mm. thought that that was a good honorable death, I guess, in a way. It sucks that he had to die, but it's very honorable that that he did it trying to save everybody. Yeah. No, I, I agree. It was it's it's great. I really appreciate that uh this movie kind of didn't follow the same path that most horror movies generally do where they set up who the main character is from the very beginning, which I think I mentioned this for a couple films we've reviewed now, but I'm just kind of glad it was Ripley who survived. Even though she may not have been the most likable character, um, I don't even know. Like, the cat probably, obviously, it's the cat. But, yeah, Ripley doesn't have a lot no. to like when it comes to her character or her, or her actions, right? In fact, she probably seems the most stuck up. Like, she's always just got a problem with whoever she's dealing with. But I think for her, it's, it comes from a survival perspective a lot of ways like she's just trying to survive she's trying to think 10 steps ahead of whatever they're trying to do and nobody not nobody but a lot of people don't like that i mean even parker and brett are giving her shit down in the engine room earlier right and then you have her right. and dallas butting heads because she's trying to save the ship but he's stuck outside so of course he's going to want in and then you have the conversation between her and ash just after dallas's death and you know, Ash is almost like, like, what do you want me to do right now? Like, what do you want? What are you expecting from me, the science guy? And she's just like, just what you've been doing, Ash, nothing. I've got access to mother now. I'll get my own answers. And then she goes into the mother room and a strong starts line. looking everything up. Yeah, it's... And oh, he's man. not in there with her when she's talking to mother until the very end. Yeah, he shows up very creepily. He just shows up. <laughs> Hello, Ripley. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. <laughs> so the the question that I have for you, Clark, is are we yeah. going to spoil this? Like, are we going to give the, the listeners what they want? I, I think we have to. Good, because Ash is kicking the ever-loving shit out of Ripley right now on my TV, and yep. I, I just have to laugh. Yeah, he uh, he's a synthetic. Um, he's, not, he's, not a, he's not a living human being. He is a... Synthetic android, he, he follows advice for the ship, um, and he's he kind of gets overrided by the company. And whatever, he's, his duty, his number one priority is to bring the alien back to whoever wants to study it. All, yep. other, all other objectives secondary. Yep, the entire crew is expendable. They don't give two mm -hmm. shits about any of the humans, whether they come back or not. Uh, all they want is that alien that sent out the SOS they want to get it back and they want to be able to research on it and all that jazz, which is pretty cool. No. Oh man. But then, so, so like he, he's basically killing her. He's stuffing this, you know, roll of magazine or whatever he's got down her throat. That's so unbelievable yeah. uh, to me in many ways, but oh, he is, man, if you think that's, that's great. Uh. <laughs> he is a robot though. So, I mean, I guess if you could get it in her mouth, and then apply the force, right? As a robot, you got to think metric ton forcing down, right? It's pretty strong. Well, Parker comes in and kills. Well, not doesn't kill, decapitates him. And they, they get answers from him. So Yeah, he spews we'll that milk shit that he was drinking. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He fucking it's a did. robot. Ash is a goddamn robot. robot. <laughs> He's not a robot. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, my OCD like... <laughs> hey, that's my favorite quote yeah. of the movie. Just putting it out there. Yeah. He's a robot. <laughs> I really like Parker's character. I know he's an asshole. Yeah, I, he's... I get that, but I really let's like talk Parker's about, character. Let's talk about favorite characters then. Let's okay. let's let's kind of we're gonna ADHD our way through this. Okay. Who is your favorite character? Uh, my favorite character is Parker. Why is it Parker? I just Curtis? like I just like his attitude. I like his. Yeah. Uh, hardworking, blue collar. He he reminds me of someone who um, is like a machinist or a mechanic, right? In today's day and age, 
Um, and I, I feel like his character is pretty relatable when it comes to his attitude on things. He's like, well, man, shit, man, if we have to go do this, you're going to have to pay me more. Otherwise, I'm not going to do it. And, you know, nobody wants to hear that, especially especially a captain like Dallas. And this is where I can understand where Dallas is coming from. Like, you have no control over your contract. You've been contracted to do a job. You're doing the job regardless. It's very union-like. You, you're getting paid X amount of money regardless of what, what your output is. That's what you're getting paid. That was the deal. So, But Parker, the way he just like keeps egging Brett on and Brett then eggs Parker on. And Parker's just, I don't know, he's so fun. I, I don't know. I just I, I mean, love like when he 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 essentially just pulled down the lot like one of the things in the uh, or a lever. He pulls down a lever so there's smoke coming in one of the tunnel, one of the corridors, mm-hmm. and that's the reason why Ripley can't talk to them. As soon as she leaves, he just turns it off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is this like you guys a fucking dick. He is. He he totally is, and I think he doesn't get along with Ripley at that time because. Like, Ripley is just giving it into them because she knows how that shit works downstairs, right? She knows how the engine room works. That's why she went down there. She's going to be yeah. like, okay, so they said X amount of time. No, 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 no. Me, being someone who's under, like, I understand this stuff. No, nah, no, nah, it'll take you, you know, half that or whatever it is. So I, I, don't, I don't know. I think that's also why I like Parker is because he's willing to give shit and take it. Like, he, he's one of those guys that you would um like make jokes to each other you know talking about each other's mamas like that that's just whoa, the kind of guy whoa, whoa. that he is off, man. you could do a you mama a joke nice mom. and he'd love it um he'd love oh yeah shout joke. out shout out to curtis's mom she loves mom shout jokes. out to curtis's mom shalom <laughs> <laughs> i would anyways have to say, uh, who's lambert's your favorite character character lambert, lambert. no i'm joking she's gonna like say she's least, she's not the least she just dies. She's just there, and then she's gone. I actually think that she and uh, Ripley both have slept with the captain. I, I kind of got that vibe. Wow. No offense to Ripley. I think she's a strong badass, but the way both of them kind of act around him kind of shows a little bit of sexual tension to me. Maybe a love interest of some sort. Like I look at Lambert, and I'd be like, okay, she slept with him just to sleep with him kind of a thing, whereas Ripley might have done it out of a realistic relationship. I don't know. That's reading too much into it. Probably. As a, no, I don't. I wouldn't put any anything behind it. I just, I just kind of noticed that. Hey, these two may have been a thing. Funny. Maybe they weren't, but I, I like think them. so. So I'm shipping it. So you're writing fan fiction now about Ripley, Lambert, and Dallas's love triangle before their trip to to go do whatever this job is, right? That's what you're working well, on today. Lambert is fucked up because she realized the captain likes Ripley more than her, and she's just <laughs> she can't get over it. Yeah. Um. So she commits suicide by alien. I see. Yeah, I see. That's, that's how it happens in my head. Head cannon. Head cannon is the best cannon. Anyhow, moving forward, everyone's you better, dead. You better be careful before <laughs> I make you watch the Blair Witch Project for this damn show, okay? <laughs> No, I, I don't have a favorite character, honestly. I, I feel this movie, I would say the alien's my favorite character. That's awesome. Actually, I, I didn't even think to ever pick that. That's I really enjoy that choice. He's climbing through all these things. He shows up at the right time, the right way. He just murders everyone, except for Ripley, because he gets stuck in between two uh, steam pipes. And he's kind of, I think they're on and they're hot, and he's like trying to get out, but he can't. Or is it asleep? I'm not sure. I, so you're talking about the alien, right? Yeah, when she, when Ripley's trying to escape the Nostromo, she's mm-hmm. on the uh, the shuttle. Okay. And the alien's stuck between two pipes or mm-hmm. something, and I it can't. It, it looks like there, it yeah. can't get out. So Ripley turns on the uh, the steam, and then she jettisons it. Yeah. Yeah. That's the simplest Unless, way to describe that scene. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't really want to. I, I could talk about the tension and everything, but everyone's death. I feel. I feel you have to kind of experience it. I don't want you to expect it. But so this yeah. this scene, like Ridley Scott's famous for saying, you know how this scene wasn't supposed to be the end. You know the alien wasn't supposed to make it out with her in the shuttle. It was supposed to yeah. die in the initial explosion. Um. But I can't remember if it was like 
you know, the 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 money company. I thought it was dead too. It, I mean, it should have been. That's the way it filmed. That, that's every every inclination is that that was the end, and that we're about to get a very happy, uh, happy go lucky, cryogenic sleep back home, right? And then you get this yeah. really awesome. I think a really good strong Security secondary. Weaver in her panties. So yeah, and that's that's another weird. comment that Ridley Scott had was like it was a, it was an opportunity for him to shoot her in her best assets. Like he is uh, he is quote like this is in a live interview. Uh, misogynistically saying that he wanted to show How's her. How's that misogynistic? Like, oh, sex man. sells. Sure, but you, I, we're not going down that road, I guess. But um, I, there are other big name people in the business who have been crucified for a lot less. I don't think he objectified her, though. He specifically, I mean, he's straight up saying that he was trying to show her. Yeah. You know, nude. Yeah. And objectifying her. How's that not objectifying her? He's trying to get people to objectify her so they can sell more movies. Eh. You can you can Honestly, look at it whichever way you want. We'll let the listeners also decide on their own without giving too much direction onto which decision to make. I just feel yeah. when you specifically say something, that's how you mean it. There isn't like a, oh, this is just artistic. I think regardless of her and her panties and us seeing her butt crack, I don't really care about that. I was more, Ripley is just a strong badass hero, and you don't really think that she's a woman. You're, you're not going, oh, look at this woman. She's saving the day. Wow, what a heroic woman. She's just a badass. She's just like a human being. She's kicking ass and taking names. And I'm glad they cut out the whole death of the alien on the ship and him actually being on the shuttle. I'm I think it's a great did. twist, yeah. I mean, I wasn't yeah. expecting it, that's for sure. It looks bad in between the pipes. It looks goofy. Because that was one of his biggest complaints, yeah, was that it's literally a dude they found uh, is like a, a stage Bolaje hand. Berejo. Yeah, he was just a stage hand. Like, he's a guy who literally built um, different parts of the sound stages and stuff on the lot. And they found him and asked him if he wanted to come do, you know, the scenes. And I think the Xenomorph, we said, is only in the film for a total of like four minutes um, combined, right? And uh, this is right. the most that they that they give you. And he really like Ridley really want to show off uh, the character, the, the, the character, the creature, because they did spend so much time on that suit. It's fully done. It's it's fully fleshed out. But it's right. a lot creepier throughout the movie to see bits and pieces versus this guy in a suit <laughs> walking around. Um, this is the only movie yeah. that this uh, this guy's been in, by the way, as yeah. the alien. Yeah. It's like I said, they just grabbed some guy off the street who was a worker and happened to be there at the time. He was tall, lanky, and that's, you know, that's what they wanted for the for the xenomorph. So, well done. They like did a they great job. Found the perfect guy. Uh so I had a theory and I just wanted to see if this is something we were supposed to figure out or um if I'm just drawing conclusions out of nothing. So I'm going to lay it out for you and then I want you to tell me what you think, okay? Okay. So heat's what makes the alien stronger, right? Like that's that's what my heat. entire conclusion is. Yeah, heat. Because okay. so like that's how the face sucker hatched, right? So when Kane stepped down through the frozen layer, there's that thick layer of mist, and that was cold air, but when Kane breaks through it, it allows warmth to go in, waking up the egg. It sprouts baby face hugger alien, which then attacks uh, Kane. Then it and you know it goes into the human's body, which is the warmest place to be. It grows into a perfect little baby alien, bursts out, then goes right into the ventilation system because they because that's where it's warm. And then Ash said, "Hey, turn up the heat because that's how you flush an animal away, right? It gets hot." But I think that just helped the alien. It didn't hurt the alien, and then now they're trying to blow up the ship, which is also going to make it even hotter, right? The whole system is heating up the building. That's why Ripley's having so much trouble running around, and she was trying to shut off stuff because it was just too damn hot to do anything, and the steam was popping everywhere. So, I mean, this is just kind of something that I concluded to, was that the whole film, I think Ash may have been trying to like speed up the process of of helping the alien, but I don't know how that would be possible. He doesn't have any information on the alien. So the only thing I so, think of is 
he screwed up. Like they all screwed up accidentally. So it's interesting that you think Heat is uh, the friend of the alien. I've I've never heard that before. He lets I, the damn thing in. <laughs> the he, fire actually does does work against the alien. Um, direct fire, like, right? Well, it so it's not. I I don't want to throw your th- your theory away, but um, all I know is that the eggs were dormant. But the alien's physiology is kind of weird. Like if you read into the, the the lore, if you watch the next couple movies, or if you watch any of if you watch Aliens, uh, the aliens take the physiology of their hosts. Like they take a bit of the the face hugger kind of impregnates whatever the host is. Um, and I think it's Aliens three. Uh, it impre- it does it to a dog, and there's kind of like a dog alien in that film. Ooh. And this one, there, this one, it's it's a human alien, right? So okay. It's it's them kind of taking different creatures' DNA and becoming something else, and their their period of growing is just crazy fast, and they have like acid blood, which we didn't really touch on as it kind of ate through the whole of the ship. Yeah, that was a really but, neat scene too. Dude, yeah, that that really. Over it. Yeah, I didn't even mention it. I that really grabbed me, and I, I can't believe we forgot. <laughs> But, yeah. No, and they've they've had a couple different coloring schemes. It was like green, brown, black. I don't know, I don't know why, but you know. Well, if it's based on where they're they or where they're made. So like this one's made in space, and you you have to imagine a fairly cold. Space is cold, right? That's what most people think, or what we're taught. Space is freezing cold, so you got to think on the ship. Even if they have heaters running or something, it's still fairly cold. So I wonder if that, you know, where they're hatched or made plays into account of what their their exoskeleton would look like. Who knows? That's crazy. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I just started putting that together as I was watching the end of the movie because as she's running around and there's all that steam, I feel like the alien, mm. uh, as it's getting hotter and it... it you know, wants to get away from where all this heat is going. It's had enough of the heat. It's done. So now it's trying to get out, which is why it pushes itself into the that sh- um, the ship, the uh, the drop ship or whatever they call it, to get away. Right. It's at the end of the movie right now where she's currently running around, sweating her ass off. Like it, it looks miserably hot as she's running around with this cat. <laughs> Gotta save the cat, man. Gotta save the cat. Okay. Cat almost um, died, man. Let's uh, let's go into yeah. Let's let's move on a bit here. Let's talk a little bit about the aliens' design itself. Let's go to fun facts and trivia. Perfect. Yeah. So the only real fun fact and trivia that I pulled out, I, I mean, here's the deal: Alien has been reviewed. It has been, I don't know, talked about for years this isn't right. this isn't a new movie this is a movie that is very well versed it's loved mm-hmm. by many um and there's not a lot out there that you can go scrum up and say hey this is a fun fact or a trivia piece so personally i don't have a bunch i only have one real thing that i want to talk about um so yeah. if you have a few we'll hit those up as well um but yeah i watched a ridley scott interview where they were talking with him about alien and he brought up a drawing that he was shown from the uh, Necronom, which Ridley Scott calls the Necronomicon in the interview. So Dan O'Bannon showed him this drawing, basically, from the Necronom, um, which Clark helped me understand that there's a gentleman by the name of H.R. Geiger um, Mm -hmm. who did the art. And so Dan O'Bannon showed that art to Ridley Scott, and they're like, yeah, this is the design that we need to go for for the alien. Now, what I didn't know, and I have recently found out today, is how phallic the alien head actually looked <laughs> in the art. Yes. I'm staring at it right now, and I can't, I can't even take it seriously because of how, how phallic it looks. All so, the aliens are phallic. All of them. So, uh, you know, hat tip for those guys thinking, let's remove the penis from the back of the alien head so that way it doesn't look so phallic. Um, and, and yeah, so that, that's basically all I got for fun facts and trivia. And I think that might be my favorite fun fact and trivia I have ever brought up. 
<laughs> Clark, so, do you like, have anything? Yeah, I want to talk like specifically about <laughs> HR Geiger's art. He's okay. uh, they even used his art for like the the chest bursters based off of like a pluck turkey design that he made so long ago. It's just weird. <laughs> the guy, his his art is everything. Every piece he does, there's generally a penis in it. Sometimes there's a there's a vagina. And the reason people are so uncomfortable with it, he says, is because they're afraid of the penis. Mm. And so, yeah. And you were you were kind of talking about how how Ridley Scott kind of picked picked this art piece when he read the Necronom. Do you want to talk about that a little bit more? Or? Well, so Dan, Dan O'Bannon was reading it, um, and oh. they were hanging out one day at at Ridley's mansion or whatever, and he he so he was showing him the the art. And there's like a whole interview online. I can't summarize the whole thing. Um, but there's also a written interview that somebody else had done. And basically at the end of the day, like the people they were showing this to Ridley Scott and Dan O'Bannon, they were just like, that is so disgusting. Like that looks so bad that, you know, like not in a bad way, but in like a scary way that they're like, hands down, this is it. We have to use this thing. This is, this is the design of the creature. This is going to be it. But but I have a question for you. Who who do you think has has more of an infatuation when it comes to phallic objects, Cronenberg or Geiger? I would definitely say Geiger. Okay, because um, I mean we we've done this before too, where we've gone over Cronenberg's work, and it's very uh, similar in that sense. So it's just curious. Like he's got a lot of weird creatures that aren't very penisy. Okay. You know, Cronenberg like, has tons we've of seen vagina the fly, creatures. Right? Yeah. Uh, we have not watched it for the show yet, but yes, we've no, both no, seen we... it. So, and we've seen, uh, oh, we haven't watched uh, Naked Lunch yet. We should do that at some point. Um, but yeah, he, he definitely has a thing for weird, creepy things too. But he's yeah. actually a, a filmmaker. And Geiger's just a guy who draws penises. An artist. An artist. He's Jonah Hill from 21 Jump Street. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I have not finished that movie. Come on. I need to finish it. Yes, I need you to. Uh, I can't I can't sit and watch. Like, I got to the point where, anyhow, we, we talk about that later. <laughs> I'm getting distracted. All right. I, do you have any other fun facts and trivia before I read yeah. off some from IMDb? Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. yeah, actually, I do. So there was an alternate version uh, so there are alternate versions, and what, what this this is interesting to me because the Sci-Fi Channel took Alien, and they cut out like 45 seconds of swearing, and a, a little bit more dialogue from the film, but they left all the other scenes and violence intact. So you essentially have the whole movie to watch um, if you don't like swear words on the Sci-Fi Channel. So happy birthday to you people who don't like swears. You're probably not listening to this anyway. I don't mind the yeah. Uh... The violence in this, though, personally, I don't think it's worth removing. Like, there's, it's not there's too not violent. Much. Yeah. It, well, the chest bursting scene is as violent as it gets. Yeah, and even that's pretty mild. Like when you watch it, it's in space balls for crying out loud. It's the same thing. I don't know. I just don't feel like it's. I I guess violent versus gory is a huge difference to me. Yeah. Um It's it's not amazing that on sci-fi they left in a lot of all of the violence, right? In in a sense that. I'm trying to think of what would be too violent to have in here. Uh, good kills are seen. They're off screen. They're not even shown. Uh, the only part that looks pretty gruesome is when the head gets kicked off of Ash and when the creature pops out of the stomach. And the, that's one's an alien. So it doesn't even count as gore. They don't, uh, there's no blood. So they don't actually count it. That can go through any screening. Uh, you can show that to a three year old for all you care in America. And then you have the chest bursting one. That is the most gruesome. And that, I mean, that made it through, yeah. Yeah, and the crazy. original film. Did they show Dallas in the version you watched? Did they show Dallas in the cocoon? Uh, no. Okay. So, in the in the theatrical version, there were a couple scenes cut, and then there's the director's cut. Uh, so, in the director's cut, so I think, yeah, Ridley Scott re-released Alien, like, in 4K. And he, he added in the director's cut again. And we could actually get there's there's some more stuff like there's a scene where Dallas is in a cocoon. The cocoons weren't weren't in here at all, uh, if you watch the original one. But when the aliens 
cocoon people, that's when they're kind of impregnating them. Like there, there's more than one way to uh, make more. And I think if, if there's no queen, that's what they do as this one was not a queen. Right. So probably a queen on the Nostromo, uh, before it blew up. That's yeah, so interesting. I, I really got to watch aliens, uh, and aliens three possibly. Cause I, I gotta know, I got to know. Let's see. Shredded condoms were used to create tendons of the beast's ferocious jaws. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. All right, well, I got a couple more for you. The blue laser lights that were used in the alien ship's egg chamber were borrowed from The Who. The band was testing out lasers for their stage show on the soundstage next door to where they were filming Alien, and ba-bam, bang, bang, there you go. Mm, like that, that actually is kind of a funny one. Harrison Ford turned down the role of Captain Dallas. Ooh, how great would he have been? I think he would have been amazing. Not that Dallas did anything wrong. Dallas was perfect. But, I mean, Harrison Ford can just, I don't know. To me, he's one of the best male actors ever. I love him in everything he does. The original cut of this movie ran three hours and 12 minutes. Really? Yeah, I'll need to pen if I ever watch that version in a theater. Many producers have professional readers that read and summarize the scripts for them. The reader in this case summarized it as, it's like Jaws, but in space. I've heard that one so many times. Let's see. Ooh, the slime that was used on the alien was just KY Jelly. Obviously. I know, Obviously it's have the that easiest thing to do, right? No, for sure. Uh, this is actually interesting. So Ridley Scott did all the handheld camera work himself. Hmm. I believe that. Interesting. Uh, the front face part of the alien costume head is made from a cast of a real human skull. You know, here's a fun Wait. fact about horror movies for you in general. Did you know that most horror films actually use real skeletons? They don't use fake skeletons. And the reason for that is because, A... Fake skeletons just don't look as good. So why the hell would we waste our time with that? They just go to like a a five and dime science center area and they pay like 650 bucks to rent the skeleton and then they use it and then they return it when they're done. Um, so you're telling me yeah, I can ahead. loan out my skeleton and get it back and get money off of that. If you figure out a way to get it in and out of you, oh, that's terrible. Um, you what? You leave that to me. <laughs> Anyhow. No, it's just it's just a known it's a known fact. It's something that I uh, I heard in a documentary that uh, a lot of people don't realize that skeletons you see in films are actually real skeletons. Um, and and okay, so here here's where it's from: the Curse series on Shutter, uh, Cursed Films, right? Uh, what is it? Uh, Poltergeist. There's a scene where there's a bunch of skeletons in like the basement floor, and the girl or whatever is being attacked by them. Yada yada yada. So people thought that that. Those skeletons, because they were real, they've been, it's very known that they were real, um, that there's some Indian curse now on, on that film, on that house, yada, yada, yada. Um, end of the day, there is no curse. Um, that house has been lived in. No owners have changed. No weird stuff has ever happened. And the gentleman who lives there is a happy, you know, guy, whatever. Um, but the guy who worked on the special effects for the film he basically laid it all out. He's like, many movies use real skeletons. This isn't an abnormal thing. There are no curses that come with using skeletons, blah, blah, blah. So just very interesting. Um, mm. Whenever people want to put like, oh, that's, you know, I can't believe you do that. That's so, you're going to curse this or whatever. It's like, come on, man. Get your head out of your ass and just enjoy the film. 130 alien eggs were made for the egg chamber inside the down spacecraft. What did they do with 129 of them? That's what I want. Probably to know. sold them. That's what I want to know. They they usually sell or have auctions with movie memorabilia um, after after a while. I'm I'm pretty sure they probably sold, or some are probably still in the warehouse somewhere. And Sigourney Weaver had pictured the alien as a big yellow blob chasing the Nostromo crew when she read this script and not seeing the designs 
for the alien. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> what did fail. you think about the design? I wish there was... You know, I couldn't find any Sigourney Weaver uh, alien interviews. Everything that kept coming up was Ridley this, Ridley that. And it's like, I'd love to hear from somebody else. You know, I would just love to hear someone else's opinion for once. Uh, right. You know, I kind of want to circle back real quick. I, I forgot to sure. mention the alien's face, the mouth. We see more close-ups of its face than anything else. Mm -hmm. And it, what do you think they used for the liquid? on its mouth. Do you think there was like some tubes that just kind of shot water out for the saliva? Cause that yeah. thing's spitting a yeah. lot. I would say it was probably something like that. Uh, what you're describing, like some small tubes, um, some guy probably, you know, standing behind him, squeezing the tubes in a specific, uh, amount of time. And then it slowly trickles up and then drips out. But as for the liquid itself, maybe somewhat of a watery liquid, but it still looked kind of thick. You know what I mean? It wasn't just like water drops. So maybe a KY mixture kind of thing um, to give it more of an elastic, drippy, thick. I don't know. I just think of like not Jello. Jello's too hard. It'd be somewhere in between, like a Jello and a a KY kind of a mixture. Mm. Goopy is a good way to describe it. Goopy. Goopy. Four different cats play Jones. I didn't know that. That's I yeah. I find that interesting. I do. Four different cats played played Jones, and he was the yeah. star of the movie. He was the star of the movie. How many? Uh, well, they had to get a cat to scream and run, and then the other one was just kind of like sitting there in Ripley's arms, being like, "I don't really care. No, this is fine." <laughs> yeah, yeah, great movie. So, Curtis, any more fun facts and trivia for us? No, I mean, check out IMDb. There's a whole page of them uh, <laughs> if you're interested in that stuff. But like I said, this movie is its a beloved film for any horror fan. Um, you know, it's from 1979 with $11 million budget, and it knocked it out of the park. I would you know? honestly say, if you don't, even if you don't like horror, this is just a good movie to watch. Uh, it's, it's scary, of course, but it's scary in the right kinds of ways like everybody's angry at each other there's something kind of killing them they're but they all kind of come together in the end except for ash because he's a because not a human. being he's, he's a robot <laughs> he's, a, he's a robot <laughs> he's a goddamn robot <laughs> anyhow yeah so i think would you recommend this movie oh definitely yeah this is huh. yep i just released my um Top 10 horror films on our Twitter page, actually, um, uh, April 21st. Yeah, and you'll yeah, notice you'll notice Alien. It's also on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. We posted it on both. Um, you'll notice Alien isn't on there. And remember, I mean, yep. those are my top 10. That's my personal top 10 favorites. Um, right. But Alien is a top 10 horror film for sure. I, I mean, I can't. I, yeah, I can't say anything else other than it's that good. It's definitely one of mine, and I I struggle with. I know I've had a top ten list uh, in the works for a long, long time for horror movies, and I just a little bit of man behind the the curtain. I just can't figure out like what my top ten are aside from The Thing and Alien, and also Cabin in the Woods. Like these are kind of like my three go to horror movies. Yeah, that's that's basically the way I looked at it. Is when I'm okay, so when I'm in a bad mood, what do I want to go watch to cheer me up? And like for me, it's always Scream. That's my go-to every time. If I'm in a bad mood, I pop in Scream. I watch Billy Loomis and Stu run amok, and I'm I'm totally in my happy place. So I'm cut real deep, man. Me, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little here. <laughs> like I just I I love that movie. Um, Nicole laughs at me. My wife she laughs at me all the time because she's like, "You're watching it again." I'm like. Just leave me alone. I'm not, you know, I had a rough day at work or whatever it was. But then I started thinking like, well, what other movies do I have like strong feelings for? So Your Next was a game changer for me because it was, it was a small budget indie film came out of nowhere, you know? And then when I, I'm not going to go through everything because we'll be here for another hour, but man, like there's just so many films, like Suspiria was just a, a revelation to me in horror, like. I still haven't seen either of them. 
It's cr- <laughs> oh, I well, would rather watch next. the remake first because you've, the you've... original is the classic, right? Yeah. So, so I want to watch the bad one first. They're so, they're both good though. Really? The remake to me is a is still a good film. They didn't if anything they just modernized it a little bit for us, you know, 2020 folks, but I heard they they actually put dancing in there and it kind of draws attention away from some of the film and it's just kind of like, okay, Nah, the the spooky witchy stuff was still there for me. But hey, I mean, okay, you're gonna have to watch it. Uh, I am soon, seeing it, so soon. So <laughs> I will watch it. I will watch it. We watched and... Midsummer before we watched Suspiria, and that really chapped my hide. Really? Yeah, just because really I I think I think Midsummer is such a modern horror tale. Like it's really good. Yeah. I have no problem with it, but it's so modernized, and I think personally, Suspiria is a much better film and could have been done way better and it has that witchy culty kind of feel to it anyways we are getting way off topic here no we're good um, we're, this is this is <laughs> fine let's uh we need to have a top can 10 episode into... can we have a top 10 yeah, episode well, we... let's do that for them let's do that for our listeners we can, they we deserve can do that it. where it, uh... and it could just be where we discuss my top 10 or what imdb thinks is top 10 that could be interesting i'm fine with that cool let's uh move into what we're doing lately though i want to i want to hear about what you're up to curtis oh I know more about you my lanta wanna... oh my lanta you this are week, my girl <laughs> this week uh i have been going through the joe bob briggs last drive-in on shutter and he he's he's a really funny guy i can't i can't say much more about that other than the way he gives you information about horror films, uh, the way he's just so chill and normal and relatable. Um, yeah, The Last Drive-In. Watch it. Check it out. There's tons of different um, themes that they've done. They did the first, so it's season one of The Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs where they watched, it was like a 24-hour marathon. They watched a bunch of horror films. And he pops in. They don't have commercial breaks. Instead, they, you know, he comes in and he talks about horror movies. And uh, tonight, actually, April 24th, so this episode's coming out way in the future, but tonight is season two's marathon uh, with J- Joe Bob Briggs, and I'll be watching it, um, and I'll be live-tweeting it. So if you want to go back and see what we did, uh, go back in time. April 24th uh, on Twitter. I'll be uh, I'll be up. I'll be doing my thing. <laughs> go back in time, guys. Just go back in do time. It. Do it. Just time travel. Come on. Just uh, we'll post something on Twitter or Instagram. Hell I, yeah. So I actually have Shutter open right now, and I'm seeing that. Yeah, there's the, the Joe Bog Briggs. I. Cool. I'm I'm excited. Anyhow, yes. It's getting ready to kick off fine. here very soon. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna be a little off topic. I'm gonna move away from the horror movies. I'm gonna talk about Final Fantasy VII remake. I have been playing that, and I don't think I've mentioned this one yet. I, I, I've, I've talked about how I played the original, um, I think twice, but the remake came out. And Curtis, I think you might want to know my thoughts on it. I do. Okay. It's I want good. to hear all about it. <laughs> it's good. Uh, it's The creators essentially said, hey, we're making a game, and once you get... They, they put, like, random ghosts. And at first I'm like, what, what, what is this crap? What are these ghosts? And a character calls them whispers. And then there's some other kind of conversation of what these ghosts are. Essentially, it's, it's the creators telling us, we're going to do whatever we want after this game. And it's not going to be the same Final Fantasy VII after this point. It's going to be completely different. Events are going to probably change. It might be some of the same. Probably the same characters. But whatever happens, you don't know. And I love that. It okay. excited me. The combat's kind of bad. The camera's bad. Um, the combat's okay. It's okay. It's not bad. It's just... Yeah. Is it's, it is it not what you would have expected from a Final Fantasy game? Is that why it's not bad, but no, it's not great? No, no, no. It's just the, the camera's bad. The mechanics are bad. You can get stuck inside... Uh, the collision mechanics, like if you're fighting a behemoth, you can get me- stuck in between its tail and its body, and you just can't roll out of it. You can't get away from him, and you just die. There's some frustrating things like that in the game. Um, it, again, the camera is terrible. Okay. 
it's it's a good it's a good game. The uh, the core mechanics are solid. There's some things they could fix along the way, but I give it like if I had to give it a point rating, I'd give it like an eight out of ten, which is high for me. Okay. Also, to kind of jump back to Alien, <laughs> now that we've seen this movie, I highly recommend you play Alien Isolation now. Oh yeah, good point. Because you play as Ripley's daughter, who is briefly mentioned in this film. Wait, I missed that. She's mentioned in the first Alien? Yeah. Ripley has a daughter. So I know she has a daughter because I've played Alien Isolation. I didn't know that they actually mentioned her in the first film. That's interesting. I, th- I thought they mentioned her in the second film. Uh, she, You see the old Amanda, too. You see her daughter as an adult in the, uh, I think, Aliens. Okay. In one of the uh, expanded scenes. But yes. You do know cool. that she has a daughter. Very cool. Um, I think so. I think she's mentioned. She might not be. I, I, I might remember things wrong. Who knows? I don't know. But yes. For those of you who haven't played it, if you Check don't like video out. games, great. If you do like them and you're okay with being scared, play Alien Isolation. Yeah. It was a lot of fun whenever I played yeah, it. I think it's time to plug, man. Let's do it. So, if you haven't, please do follow us at the number two guys horror pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can also email us at two guys and some horror at gmail.com. The two is spelled out there. We do a lot of different um, social media posts, right? So I do a daily on Inst- or on Twitter, um, on Instagram. We do more. Um, it's it's to me. Our Instagram is a lot more artistic with a lot of our posts. Um, it's more personal. You're going to get a lot more pictures of Clark and I on there. Um, sometimes our guests, stuff like that. Whereas with Twitter, I'm, I'm just managing that thing all day, every day, just trying to keep up with uh, different horror trends and stuff that's going on. I feel like the, the, I don't know if you agree, Clark, but I feel like the social media platforms are just two completely different types of platforms. Um, that that we just we have to treat them differently. We just have to. I completely agree. Instagram is for pictures and for other things. Twitter's for having a conversation. Definitely. Cool, but yeah, make sure you guys follow us there um, if you don't already, and always like reach out to us, talk with us. I've met a lot of cool people through Twitter. Um, got a lot of interesting things going on in the background. Currently working with the mutant fam. Talking with Video Creep a lot, um, watching nice. cartoons with Lily's Lab, working with Garage of Horror. These are just some of the people that you know I'm talking to on Twitter on a daily basis, trying to um, you know work out different events maybe with them. Maybe we'll have them on the episodes. I don't know. We'll see. Like whatever happens, happens. I mean, Super we'll exciting. We'll find out, won't we? Yeah. And a huge shout out to all of you, our listeners, because we've officially hit over 400 plays. On the show, um, I mean, we officially started the show September, late September, early October. So yeah. we're like, what, seven months in? Somewhere around there. About, and and yeah. yeah, and we've already hit uh, 400 listens, which to me is just insane that uh, any amount of people would want to listen to us for 400 episodes or 400 total listens um, across 32 episodes we have out right now. So man we love you guys you guys are awesome uh we got some really fun stuff my favorite movie hands down is next week's episode so i hope you guys are excited for that uh we have my uh well i don't even know if i'd say my we have our uh good friend mimic coming on to 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 join us for that episode um and yeah so if you guys, we're going to, I'm going to be dropping some new ways of hinting at movies too. I'm going to start trying to use sound bits, uh, and different clips maybe to try and give you guys hints, uh, just to spice up things a little bit. But yeah. Yeah. All right. I think I'm done talking for now. This is, this is what happens when we only record one episode <laughs> instead of two is oh. I'm just willing to talk for, for like four hours. We should just be doing a live show here. People, oh. people love us. Right, I, people. People just want to hear yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. They just, they just want to hear you, Curtis. Just keep talking, man. 
Not I'm, to mention, I'm this, is, here, I'm using this is a classic. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is a classic movie. We can't. We have to give it credit. No. We have to pay it we honor. And I this, think this we've movie done that. is homage. Yeah, we, we can make our our own alien movie. You know, who's getting their chest yes. burst? I don't call dibs. Ooh, chest bursters! No, 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 no. We're gonna do butt bursters. All right, butt bursters it is. Butt bursters it is. All right, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, to reiterate what Curtis said, we love you, and we will see you next week. Bye. Thank you.